thousands who are now in their graves were taught that it was wrong to expect death and make suitable preparations for it. They were told that the return of Christ was so near he would certainly come during their lifetime. Alas, the writer has, in measure, been guilty of the same thing. True, it is both a Christian's happy privilege and bounden duty to be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Titus 2.13 For this is the grand prospect which God has set before His people in all ages. But He has nowhere told us when His Son shall descend. He may do so today. He may not for hundreds of years. But to say that looking for that blessed hope makes it wrong to anticipate death is manifestly absurd. The Old Testament saints had just as definite promises for the first advent of Christ as the New Testament saints have for His second, and they thought frequently of death. It is greatly to be feared that much of the popularity with which the premillennial and imminent coming of Christ has been received may be attributable to a carnal dread of death. A strong appeal is made to the flesh when people can be persuaded that they are likely to escape the grave. That one generation of Christians will do so is clear from 1 Corinthians 15, verse 51, 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 17. But how many generations have already supposed that theirs was the one which would be raptured to heaven, and how many of them were quite unprepared when death overtook them. Only that day will show. We are well aware that these lines are not likely to meet with a favorable reception from some of our readers, but we are not seeking to please them, but God. Any man who is ready to die is prepared for the Lord's return, as you may very likely die before the second advent. It is only the part of wisdom to make sure you are prepared for death. And who are they whose souls are prepared for the dissolution of the body? Those who have disarmed death beforehand by plucking out its sting, and this by seeking reconciliation with God through Jesus Christ. The hornet is harmless when its sting is extracted, a snake need not be dreaded if its fang and poison have been removed. So it is with death. The sting of death is sin, 1 Corinthians 15:56. And if we have repented of our sins, turned from them with full purpose of heart to serve God, and have sought and obtained forgiveness and healing in the atoning and cleansing blood of Christ, the death cannot harm us. It will but conduct us into the presence of God and everlasting felicity. Who are ready to die? Those who evidence and establish their title to eternal life by personal holiness, which is the first fruits of heavenly glory. It is by walking in the light of God's word that we make it manifest that we are meet for the inheritance of the saints in light. In or according to faith died all these. To die in faith, we must live by faith. And for this there must be first diligent labor to obtain a knowledge of divine things. The understanding must be instructed before the path of duty can be known. Teach me thy way. Order my steps in thy word must be our daily prayer. Second, the hiding of God's word in our hearts. Its precepts must be meditated upon, memorized, and made conscious of. Only then will our affections and lives be conformed to them. God's word is designed to be not only a light unto our understanding, but also a lamp unto our path. Our walk is to be guided by it. Third, 
the regular contemplation of Christ by the soul, a worshipful and adoring consideration of His fathomless love, His marvelous grace, His infinite compassion, His present intercession. This will deliver from a legal spirit, warm the heart, supply strength for duty, and make us want to please Him.